All right, just doing a quick review. All right, so here we have tables. Okay, tables are really, really important. Um, the other thing is that the words, so these things here are technically referred to as verbs. Okay, so everybody here know what an English verb is? Okay, it's like an action word. Okay, so it's the action you're taking on the thing. So that's sometimes it's a little easier to remember it that way. I don't know, your mileage may vary. Um, but these particular action words, so select, drop, sort, where, are the reason they're chosen is because in many different places in data science, when you want to do one of those things, it's always the same term, okay? So if I want to go grab something, it's called a select. If I want to get rid of something, it's called a drop. If I want to sort something, it's called a sort. And when I want to try to find something, it's called a where, okay? So this is more kind of general knowledge that the reason you're, we're using these particular verbs is because they're very common and it should help with any other data science classes you decide to take. All right, moving on. And here we have our first question. And so which function constructs a new table? Oh my God, I keep having typos. In which the specified columns are omitted. Okay, so omitted for anybody who doesn't have a, the best English vocabulary means removed or again trying not to use the keyword but i think in terms of these verbs as well <laughs> all right get your answers in we have 97 oh that's pretty good a few more to go all right, last chance. All right, submissions are closed. And the correct answer was drop, which a lot of you got, which is pretty good. Um, and I will tell you, so D, uh, omit is actually a very unusual verb to use in any kind of programming. You don't see that word very often. So if you do see it, it's probably a trick. All right, so moving on to numbers and we immediately go to a demo. Um, hopefully you all appreciate my uh, sparkly demo icon. Um, so the lecture notebook for this one is very boring. It's essentially blank, okay? One thing I'll tell you though, for this particular lecture, keeping up is probably not that important because I'll be, I'll be cutting and pasting a lot. Um, you know, so, you know, try to keep it loosely, uh, you know, if you can, um, but the idea is more experiment with it, more see it, uh, than it is to necessarily fall along perfectly. Um, now I'm going to try to find my window again. Not that one. All right. So. First and foremost, we have a number like this, okay? Does anybody know what we call that kind of number? Do you remember from taking any mathematics? Integer. Uh, please do raise your hand then. I can call individual people. Um, or if I'm feeling mean, I can pick people out. Um, so it's called an integer, okay? So in programming world, what do you think we call it? Remember, programmers are lazy int okay so if you see int it's short for integer if you ever see a programmer write something out it's kind of usually a sign that they're not a good program okay just a hint uh, that's also if they drink pepsi just another hint all right so first and foremost then we call this an int all right does anyone know what happens if i run this like this like if i execute that uh, uh cell Okay, so this is what's called a comment. So in other words, Python will not try to execute it. Okay, so anything that is after this character. All right, so this character has gone through a lot of names. All right, does anybody know what the original name of that character is? Come on, anybody? No, the original name, that's later. 
All right, and I think this is hilarious. That's why I bring it up. It's called an octothorpe, okay? Because there's eight, uh, whatever it is, eight uh, like pieces. Um, and so that's the octo and thorpe, I think is the person's name. Uh, but so yeah, so originally it was called an octothorpe. And then when it was uh, primarily used on, on, key, uh, like on phone keyboards, uh, it became called the pound sign. Um, and then it, but what's funny is that it's not affiliated with the money pound, right? That's a different symbol. Um, and then eventually it became primarily because of Twitter, it became called the hashtag, right? Uh, am I missing one? Is there another name for it? No, that's it, right. Okay. So if you see that, that means I'm going to make a comment. So in other words, don't try to process this. This is where you usually put in like an explanation. So in this case, I said, hey, this thing's going to be an int, okay? All right, so if I, actually, let me stay here. If I do this, am I going to get an integer? Why? Okay, that that was a that was a more advanced answer than I was looking for. Um, uh, that's cool. Like you are not incorrect, however. Yeah. So the answer is not an integer, right? So there's a decimal place here, and then it has digits after the decimal place. So an integer doesn't have a decimal component. Okay. I mean, there's one implied when you think about it in terms of mathematics, right? It's a dot zero, but you don't write it normally. And in the interest of saving space on a computer, uh, it just throws it away. So that's why you have these two different classes of number. So anything, whenever you see it has a decimal, that means it's a float, okay? It's called a float. Um, I don't actually know the origin of this term, but I always think of it as like, it's floating around the integer. And so like, because it's not quite the integer, it's kind of floating near it. Um, that's why it's called a float. I have no idea if that's why it's really called that. It's just what happens in my head. All right, so, and uh, like I said, your answer was the advanced answer. I don't even know if we're gonna get into like modding and stuff. So um, let's see, sorry, gotta look at my cheat sheet, figure out what I'm talking about next. Um, and then what do you think will happen if I do 20 divided by two? All right, will I get a float or will I get an int? Okay, why? Right, kind of to her answer earlier. So if you do a division, even if it results in an integer, it will be uh, the type of it, which we'll talk about in a bit, it will be a float, okay? Um, most of the time, this doesn't matter that much, but it does sometimes. So you have to kind of be aware of the fact that Python is thinking of those two types of numbers as two different things. All right, then, Let's see, I keep trying to go type from the other screen. Um, all right, what type of number will this be, you think? Okay, the, the, the input is an exponent, but what will the result be? An integer, correct. Right, so remember the double star means we're gonna raise it to a power of five. I was not gonna ask you to try to calculate that in your head. Um, maybe some of you can, I know I can't. All right, so let me just see. I hate when I get ahead of myself. So we can also do quite big things, right? That's gonna be a big number, right? So, but it's still an integer, okay? Doesn't have a decimal. And it just, you know, it's just a big, huge number. Now you see why we label stuff a lot of the time. Like we put a name on it, right? We don't want to like carry this number around. Um, so we just stick it somewhere and then not worry about it. Um, all right, then moving on. Um, yeah, so one, one thing, this is, is something that I think catches people a lot. Um, so if I do four divided by 700, okay? So what I end up with, right, is a number that starts with zero, right? And then it has like the decimal is quite a bit further over. This is still just a float. It's just like the other ones, just because it doesn't have anything in front of the decimal, it just has a zero. It's still just a regular old float. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. The other answer, the other examples are kind of boring. Um, so we won't do this. All right. However, what we can do is if we want to do something where we want it to be an integer, okay? So this 20 divided by 10, as we established earlier, would result in a float, right? If we wrap it in this method or function called int, it'll convert it back to an integer, okay? But keep in mind, right, it's two steps. The first thing that happens is this division, 20 divided by 10, which gives a float, and then it's passed to this method, which will convert a float to an int, okay? Now, so if we do 20 divided by nine, okay, that is not an integer, right? It's 2.2-ish. Um, so what'll happen if I put int around this? Anybody have any ideas? It'll round it. Actually, it won't round it. It'll actually lop it off, okay? So the distinction being, so it's just gonna turn it into an integer. So let me think of, say, wait, will that be? Yeah, so actually, let me put them both up here at the same time. So this is an important distinction in that it doesn't round it, right? It just, deletes or removes everything after the decimal, okay? Because what this should be, if you follow proper rounding rules, is a seven, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so keep that in mind. Using functions like this are sometimes what's referred to in the tech world as lossy, okay? You know what lossy would mean? It's exactly what it sounds like. Right, so you, you can't recover from where you went, okay? So in other words, I can't get this 0.6 whatever back. So, because I lost it, like that's why it's called lossy. So you see this a lot when you talk about images, okay? So you take an image on your phone, right? And then you upload it to Instagram. That's usually a lossy process as in the quality of the photo deteriorates, right? Because they won't let you upload the quality level that you took the picture at, okay? And there's no way to recover it, so it's referred to as lossy. Make sense? All right. Um, some of those are boring. So, but this is where it starts getting interesting again. However, I'm going to cut and paste this one because there's a lot of zeros. Okay. So what happens here? All right, does anybody know what this is? Scientific notation, okay? And so what it's doing is it's representing it in a way that just kind of hides a lot of what, what Python is considering extraneous information, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind, that's, that's what that means, okay? That it's uh, really, really far that way uh, past the decimal, okay? Because Minus 56, 56 places but, uh, after the decimal when these numbers start. Make sense? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, usually it starts to just kind of come to you after a bit, but scientific notation is important. Uh, make sure you do the reading with the scientific notation stuff, uh, especially if you haven't seen it that much before. Um, one last example I want to give while we're talking about numbers is what happens when you do an operation with a float, okay? That makes it into a float, okay? So generally speaking, Python doesn't want to lose information on you. So as a result, it's gonna take the most, um, like the, the, the method that has, carries the most information to give the answer back in. Okay, so a float obviously can carry more information than an integer. So it's gonna give you back a float when you multiply by a float, even though it doesn't actually need it. Does that make sense? All right, cool. 
then now we'll go back to the slides. All right. And we'll just kind of re recap this in English. Um, so, did I miss a slide? No, okay. Uh, so real numbers and writing them. So in mathematics, a real number is a value of a continuous quantity that can represent a distance along a line, okay? Uh, so that's kind of the formal definition. In Python, we use slightly different terminology. Like I said, basically in the interest of space on the computer in the RAM, okay? So we have integers um, and we have floats. Okay? And I actually wrote out integer here, but if you see integer versus int, it's synonymous. And then scientific notation, um, the E here implies 10, okay? So that's why it's an E, all right? Uh, this is actually mathematical as well, like you see this in mathematics, um, but in programming languages, we just use the E. Um, as you might imagine, right, these, a construct like this to type it is harder. So because we're lazy again, we tend to write it just like this, okay? So this is equivalent to this, and this is equivalent to this. And I probably should put those next to each other to make it more obvious. All right? Cool. Um, you actually won't normally see this with programming, right? Because you have, this is a label, right? So in other words, this would actually, or sorry, this is a variable. Uh, so this would actually get replaced with whatever the number actually was or blow up if it's not actually set to anything. All right, so an integer of any size, it never has a decimal point. Float has an optional fractional part, but it always has a decimal point, okay? So, and an optional fractional part just means it's dot zero, okay? A float will use scientific notation, but if you notice that huge integer we did earlier, that did not go to scientific notation, right? It will, um, it'll actually show you the whole number every time. Um, and so I, I always struggle with whether to get it too deep into this, but um, as you might imagine, right, in a computer, there's, remember we talked about bits and bytes and, and that stuff in the first lecture? So you can only store so much information in one of those, right? And the number of those, the number of bytes that we store, say a float in, will obviously limit how big or small a float we can make. So they do have a limited size. You can make them too big, okay? But it's pretty rare um, and it's getting rarer every, not every day, but uh, like on probably everyone's computer in here, certainly on mine. That, big, that size is really big, okay? I don't even know, like, it's in the, yeah, I don't even know. It's a big, big, big. Um, or, and if you think about it in terms of the other way, it's also really small, right? Because it's the number of decimal places. Um, or it's the number of digits you can have. So that counts, it could be decimal places. So it could be like, you know, point, you know, or zero point, you know, and then a whole mess of digits. But 15 or 16 decimal places is about all you get, okay? So, but you might imagine those are pretty big and pretty small numbers. Um, and so as a result, you've got to keep in mind that if you are operating in that kind of range, that they can be wrong, okay? Because the basically it, it starts losing accuracy because it's losing that right edge of digits. Does that make sense? All right, hopefully you won't encounter any of those examples in this class but it can happen. It's something to be kind of aware of um, because, you know, again, computers are stupid. So they're going to do what you tell it to do, even if what you tell it to do is a mistake. All right. Next question. And y'all should find this one pretty easy if it ever actually shows up. Why didn't it load? I'm not having good computer day lately. Or did it ever get a question? Okay, there you go. You might have to submit it again, I'm not sure. Or is it still open? Yeah. I don't know why the question's not showing up. So the question, if I recall correctly, is uh, what separates the two halves of a float? And I think it's slightly worded better in the, does anybody see it? Can you read it? 
All right, what will a float always have? Um, that was pretty good on the sing song, but we gotta, you know, we gotta work on the timing so that everybody goes off on the same time. All right, get those answers in. All right, I always think this is an interesting set of answers. Hopefully it'll, is it gonna show them to you? Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so <laughs> a spot. I, I haven't seen, I, I think it's the first time I saw a spot. Um, I, you know, somebody just wrote a literal period. Um, and then, um, you know, but the ones I, I think I marked correct, right? Uh, you know, because I happen to think of them are decimal point, decimal, um, Oh, I did actually have a literal period as a, as one of the answers and then uh, the word period as well. Um, so, you know, most of you got the, the idea whether you typed in the same thing that I expected you to type in or not, it's a different story. Um, cool. All right. Um, why is this not like operating directly? All right. So now we're going to talk about strings, um, and we have some more things, some more demo. All right. So first and foremost, can someone raise or can someone tell us what a string is in terms that a layman would understand? But you can use the word character. Anybody? Somebody knows what a string is. All right. A group of characters. That's a really good way of putting it. Okay. So a string, okay. Imagine like an actual string. Okay. And it's basically a, a set of characters in a row. Okay. And so we call it a string because it kind of looks like a string of characters. So for example, um, and we'll see how many uh, Star Wars fans there are. All right, so we have what I typed here, which is a set of characters, right? But I put them in quotations. And we talked about this a little in some lecture prior to now, but, um, and now we have a, like an object as far as Python's concerned, that is called, that is a string, baby Yoda, okay? And it includes the space, that's one of the characters. And that's why we call it characters, right? In case we have other things than letters or numbers. Um, but then let's get into this a little bit. So I can also do Yoda, oops. All right, and that's gonna do the same thing. Where it gets a little tricky is if I say, baby Yoda isn't, nope, nope, isn't Yoda. That's gonna break. Why is it gonna break? Because the computer is stupid. It sees this apostrophe and thinks that you're closing your string. Okay. But you're not. You really mean that to be an apostrophe, not the end. Okay. So, what we do in programming land when we want to tell the computer to stop being stupid, we cut and paste this because I'm lazy and I can't type. Oh, does that actually work? And we do what is referred to as escaping. Okay. And so to escape something, we put a slash in front of it. Okay, and what that means to the computer, so, it's, so there's two things to take away from this. That this slash in front of the apostrophe means don't treat it like it's the closing, just ignore it, it's just part of the string, okay? But what do you think that means for the slash? Somebody else. It's not in the, uh, not included. So the slash apostrophe will make it so that it's just right. It'll drop the uh, uh, slash because now the slash apostrophe has turned into just an apostrophe in the string. But go ahead. Right. So so the problem is, what if I do this? Right. Now it's going to get all confused because it's going to try to figure out what you want me to do with slash t. Right. Because it's going to see the slash and think it's something important. 
So you also have to escape a slash if you want to use a slash. Does that make sense? So um, probably doesn't come up that much, but there's another cool trick, which is for the lazy amongst us, how we actually solve this problem most of the time is use the reverse of the one you need. Okay, so if you want an apostrophe, surround it in quotes. If you want to put a quote in it, surround it in apostrophes. That makes sense? All right, but you can escape both a double quote, like a, you know, the two little apostrophes, which we usually call a quote mark, or an apostrophe. You can just put that slash in it, it'll do the same thing. It also won't hurt anything if you escape it anyway, or I don't think it will. So yeah, so even though I didn't need to escape it this time because I put it in quotes, it doesn't hurt anything to, to escape it anyway, all right? So just keep that in mind. It can result in weird bugs, um, you know, weird errors because, you know, for some reason you didn't, you, you're not seeing it. But this is where modern development environments, for example, like Jupyter Notebook, really help you with the coloring. So if you notice, this changed from red to black when it was wrong right? Because it's saying, well, this isn't part of the string anymore, so I'm not going to color it red, okay? But in this case, it kept it red, all right? So I apologize if you have colorblindness. Um, I don't know if Jupyter Notebook has a, a colorblind mode. A lot of things do, um, but at least this kind of colorblindness is super rare, so... Uh, it helps. I, I often think of colorblindness because one of the people I've worked with for many, many years off and on, it's very weird. We've been peers. He's been my boss. I've been his boss. Uh, it's very odd. Um, but he's completely colorblind, like no colors at all. Uh, and so uh, he can be fun to make fun of. Um, all right. So, but it does make me think about it a lot when I, you know, like I'll see like a spreadsheet and the indicator of, you know, this thing is in good state versus bad state will be like, it'll be highlighted in green and the other ones will be highlighted in red. And he'll look at it and be like, what do you want me to do with this? I can't, I have no idea what the difference is between those two rows. So something to keep in mind if you like to use color for information. All right, uh, next thing, we can also add strings together. Okay, uh, the formal term for this is concatenation. Okay, that I think means the exact same thing as it does in English. This is like, sometimes I get into words where like I know them from programming and I think I know them in English, but I'm not always sure. So concatenation just means merge these two together because I can just add them up, right? But if you notice, right, it doesn't do anything smart. It doesn't put a space between them, for example. It's literally gonna take the two strings and combine them. All right, but if I want to take the two strings, but I do want, let's say a space, well, then I can just do a space and do another plus sign. And now we have a space between them, okay? I could have also just put the space here or not there, but here, um, but you get the idea. All right, so, one of the things I think is cool about Python, because you don't see this actually in a lot of programming languages, what do you think is going to happen with doing multiplication on a string? Uh, we'll write it out in time. Yeah, so you'll get 10 of them. It'll multiply your string by 10. <laughs> now you're reading the screen for us. Um, All right, uh, and sorry, let me see if there was another example I wanted to show. All right, uh, so however, you need to do things that are logical, right? So what if I do, what's gonna happen here? Any ideas? Wild guesses are totally fine. An error which I find kind of disappointing, to be honest. I really want it to be, you know, ha five times and then an H, right? But it is not what it's going to do. It's going to say, uh, no dummy, that's too ambiguous for me to figure out. Make it, make it a little clearer. Um, all right, 
Let's see. Okay, the other cool thing you can do with these, and I'm uh, taking too much time with these, but I think they're fun. Um, that's not gonna work. All right, what we can do though, is we can also use that handy function we had before, okay? And turn it into a number, okay? So even though it was a string, um, I can convert that into an integer. Um, however, again, if you're ambiguous, it won't always do the right thing, okay? So for example, I would expect this to work, but it doesn't, okay? Because it's gonna say, oh, no, I can't do an int with something that has a decimal, okay? So very easily, I can fix it by doing float, And if I don't say gloat, which is kind of a funny typo, um, then now I have a float that's 3.0, okay? The reason I find this a little bit annoying, right, is because it's kind of inconsistent, right? If I did int on 3.0 as a number, it would just give me three back, right? So just keep in mind that most of the time, it wants you to pass the correct thing uh, to whatever you're operating with. All right, I should file a bug for that. I know some of the Python core maintainers, so that would really annoy them. And then they would yell at me. All right, but I can go the other way too. I can take a number and turn it into a string, okay? And why is it SCR? Because we're lazy, right? Because writing out string would be far too much. Make sense? All right, and then just one more quick example, which is that, you know, you can, you can kind of turn anything into a string, okay? Um, and it's it's pretty forgiving. Uh, and it and both basically all three of those methods come in handy a lot, okay? So you know just kind of keep in mind that you have that as an option. Um, and now we'll go back to the kind of formal definition stuff, just here and there. All right, so text and string. So we have character, again, lazy. What the type is for that, we're gonna talk about types in a minute, is, and this is funny, a char, okay? Not called a car, not like character, right? But it's called a char, right? When spoken. Um, and a string is a set of characters of any length. Some examples, right? Strings consisting of numbers can be converted to numbers. Uh, so you can do int on 12 and float on 1.2. Any value can be converted to a string. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with myself from this slide, and also because I can't think of any examples of where you can't. But you know, obviously, it is possible that I'm forgetting something. But pretty much across the board, you can convert anything to a string. Um, and this is super handy if you want to see, for example, what's in a variable. Right? You did a bunch of math or whatever, and you combined a bunch of things together, and now you're like uh did it get where i wanted it to go um and so sometimes printing it as a string will kind of show you what you have rather than um necessarily more operations or whatever so that can be handy all right um next question let's see if my yes all right uh i think it's very funny that the title of this is match.com but If it wasn't previously established, I have a terrible sense of humor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that I find it kind of annoying that it's inconsistent. Um, so int will lop off the end of a float if you give it a float. If you give it a string that looks like a float, it'll get angry. Like I said, we should file a bug. Is the difference between using double quotation marks and like full quotation marks the difference between like what it has to be versus like no. one? So, 
So the, the question is, what's the difference between using quote marks and apostrophes basically as, as uh, the surrounding of a string? For the vast majority of cases, nothing. It's exactly the same. Kind of more advanced Python, um, if you use double quotes, you can have some of your folks or whatever will like operate on stuff inside the string before making the string. So imagine if you were trying to make a list of apple types, okay? And you had a list of apple types over here and you had a, I have a apple type. I have a, another apple, you know, apple types or whatever. I want to combine those things. I can put a keyword, some, like I said, this is a little bit more advanced, but I can put a key in there and then have it map to the apple types and then get five strings out of it, which I wouldn't be able to do with single quotes. So like I said, for the vast majority of cases, even the vast majority of cases where I do stuff in Python, they're the same. Okay, once in a while, you need to know the difference between those two. Yeah. If you um, do like an int first and then you uh, wrap the float, like parentheses 3.0, then it will come back as just like the input 3. If you do. So, like if you wrap the float um, parentheses 3.0 in an int wrap, it will come back as just 3. Right, right. So, so if you. If you convert the string to a float, then convert it to an int, right? That will work because it'll lop it off because now it has a float to work with and it will lop it off like it does normally with an int. I just don't understand why you have to do two steps. Um, okay, I think everybody's got their answers in. And I find this thing very difficult to read. Um, so the correct answers um, were basically the, you know, the 3.0 is a float, the three is an integer, and this uh, construct, right, is a string. Actually, let me uh, kind of give a little bit of a caveat. Generally speaking, you should use a single quote around your strings, okay, for the course of this class and in general, because it always means I want the literal thing in this string and use double quotes only when you need them, okay? Um, I tend to use them interchangeably, but it's better practice to use single quotes unless you need double quotes for some reason. Or the trick about like, you don't feel like escaping a quote, so you just use double quotes around it, that's fine. But in the vast majority of cases, you should really use single quotes. For one thing, it'll get you used to what Python is gonna represent it as, right? It's always gonna show it to you as single quotes even if you gave it to it in double quotes. All right, so let's talk about types. Um, and all right, so types, okay? Uh, this is exactly what it sounds like. Everything that we talk about in Python, so every construct, everything, right, has a type. So, for example, we can use the method type to find out what the type of something is. So, as you might imagine, this comes back as int. Okay, so you can ask it what the type is. Anybody know why this might be useful? So sort of, um, but here, we'll let him answer. Right, so so I think this is kind of what you're getting at, but like, imagine if this was a variable here and it told me it was a float, that would be useful information before I tried to do an integer operation on it, right? Because the integer operation is lossy. So I might want to know that it's a float. There's lots and lots of other reasons why you want to do this. One of the things is like if the math you're doing should be coming out to be an integer, but it's coming out to be a float, that would be an indicator, right? You could just check and say, what is the type of this thing? Um, so there, there's lots of different tricks that you use to if you, you know, or like a string versus an integer and you're, you're confused about why that is. So you look at the type of it a lot 
it's usually used because you're trying to evaluate, you know, why is this thing this tight? Um, but it's super handy. Um, as we just kind of said, it also works on variables. Um, and so, right, so we still get an int. Um, and it will also, it'll like follow the variable too. So if I say A equals 4.5, and then I say type of A, it'll be a float, right? So it follows whatever the variables. It's, it's literally going to tell you what's in the variable or the type of whatever's in the variable. The variable, okay, the A here, is not required to always be of the same type. It can change based on its contents, okay? Um, if you've ever taken any programming in any other programming languages before, this is different than other programming languages. Not all other, but some. All right. Um, and it basically, it works on everything. Um, so, you know, I can do type on, you know, cow and I'll get a string back. Um, but what it starts to also get interesting is you can also do type on more complicated things. And so I didn't really show you this, but I created a table at the very beginning. Oh, did I type it wrong? Oh, I think I forgot to run it. Um, so the first thing I did up here, right, is, and then forgot to run it, is I actually said, read this table of skyscrapers and put it into a table called skyscrapers. So now, look, we can do the type on skyscrapers, and you'll see that it's a type table, okay? So this is the library it came from. This is the sub part of the library and then that thing there. Um, so one of the things I, I don't think I've talked about in this class, but like when we are programmers, okay? Much like imagine being a carpenter, okay? When you're a carpenter and you are gonna go on a particular carpentry job, whatever that is, you go to your garage, let's say, or maybe a warehouse or something, and you go and select the tools you're gonna need for that job. Right. You don't bring every tool that you have. You only bring the ones that are needed for this particular piece of work. So when you're doing programming, we have these things called libraries or modules um, that are the equivalent of a set of tools. So like imagine a soccer wrench set or like a set of screwdrivers or whatever. It may have like you may have like a box of a set of things and you bring the socket wrenches when you want to go to one particular job but you bring this set of screwdrivers to another particular job. And then you go, when you need a screwdriver, you go and pick the individual screwdriver you need. Does that make sense? All right. So when I use this data science import star here, what that means is I want the box of you know, tools that are called data science, okay? Or you know, the equivalent of the box of screwdrivers. And the star means I want them all, okay? I want to bring all of that box of tools, okay? The next one down, or not the next one down. Um, this one says in this box called Matt Plotlib, I don't want to bring the whole set, okay? I'm going to go into my set of screwdrivers and I'm going to pick five of them and bring those along, okay? I'm not going to bring the whole box of screwdrivers. That makes sense. So what we do when we're what's going on up here, and you don't need to worry about how to do this yourself yet, but just kind of an idea of what's going on is that we're essentially going to our garage and we're picking the tools we're going to take for this job, right? Because I don't want to bring more tools than I necessarily need, because then I don't have enough room in my truck or whatever. That makes sense. So the reason I bring it up is because here's my box of screwdrivers. Here's the set of screwdrivers out of the box that I brought along. And then this is the particular screwdriver I'm using for the skyscrapers. All right, everybody get it? Yeah, no questions? I like the thumbs up. Um, I've also thought about doing snaps, you know, but all right. So um, you may have seen us use this a little bit. 
when we were talking about doing like descending, um, you know, is true or versus false. So this is what's built in. There is a thing called a true, okay? And so you can use true to mean true anywhere you want in anything in your programming, but its type is bool. Does anybody know what bool means? Boolean, okay? Does anybody know what a Boolean is? Uh, how about you back there? Yeah. No, no, no. It has a value of true or false, or put even more simply, it's on or off, okay? So it can only be in two states, on or off. So we were talking originally about computers and that power switch, right? The zero and the one, that's a Boolean, okay? So a Boolean always means on or off. Um, I, that's another one where I don't know the word origin. Um, but uh, then, does anybody else or anybody who's got some programming background know another thing I could do the type of? Another type of thing? All right, yeah. Yeah, I meant more like, uh, so that's another object. Um, so we have built-ins, right, which is like a true. We have, uh, you know, arbitrary, our own things. We have like numbers, but then we can also do, this is one of those questions it's hard to ask. Um, I can actually do it on a method itself, okay? So I can find out that this is a built-in function or method. Make sense? So when you say, for example, create a variable name, and you accidentally called it ABS because it was appropriate to whatever you were doing and didn't know there was a method called ABS and everything goes haywire. Sometimes doing a type on your name will tell you, oh, that's because it's already like reserved, right? I can't use that for my variable name. Um, you can also usually tell because it'll turn green if it's built in, um, but this is the proper way of finding out for sure. And actually, Technically speaking, this is how Python Notebook knows to make it green. All right, back to slides. All right, so every value has a type. Um, we've seen at least four, uh, int, float, stir, and table. Um, these are likely, I mean, we'll, we'll probably do more, but, um, you should definitely know these, and you should definitely know these for, say, future exams or tests or whatever. All right, so every value has a type, built-in function or method, right? Um, we just saw that one. We see int, we see table, um, and stir. Um, and <clears throat> it'll also tell you the result type, too. So if you did, like, a division or something like that, it would tell you float right? Um, because it always does the thing inside the parentheses before it does the actual method, right? So it's actually going to do the math first. Um, and again, type is based on the value, not how it looks, right? So, you know, if x equals two, then type x will be int. Um, but if I change x equal to, you know, uh, you know, apostrophe, cal apostrophe, you know, type will be str, right? So it follows what's on the inside, not the name. Cool. All right. Another question. So what would you call the item that is inside the parentheses that hopefully you can see on your phones or whatever, and I just can't see here? Yeah, I got to go figure. Oh, I think I figured out that if I use Chrome, it renders properly. Um, so you should be seeing an actual example. If you're not seeing an example, you will not be getting this correct. Because I see some people who gave the correct answer in general, whereas this is a specific case. Can you all see something specific? Can you tell me what it says? What is the output of type parentheses 2.2? 2.2? Okay, so if you do type here, let's see. Ink on paper, how point? So type two dot two.
I like I said, I don't know why it's not rendering. I think it's just to annoy me. But again, the idea of these is to give me a sense of how you're doing or whatever, and that you are answering the questions, not so much that they're correct. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What What will you get if you execute that as a cell? All right, let's go. And so the correct answer was float. The generic answer, which made me write that on the wall, is argument, which so, you know, the thing that would go in to type would be called an argument because it's a method. All right. All right, so we talked about this a little bit. Um, you can do conversions between them by using the various built-in methods. Um, as you can see, right? Um, some of these are not gonna work well. Uh, some of them work better than others. Um, to be honest, uh, this is one of those things where uh, like if I'm writing you know, a piece of code or whatever, and I don't know quite what it's gonna do to it, I will actually go and write a little example on the side and try it and see what happens, okay? Like, I find it disappointing that that probably won't work, right? So I might just go try it and see if somebody built something that'll make it work because it might be kind of cool. So um, so just keep in mind, right? When you're doing the homeworks or you're doing the labs, I think you're doing your first lab uh, this Friday. Um, there's no reason that you can't add more cells, okay? The only thing you can't do because it'll break the auto grader is like reassign the variables, okay? But otherwise, you can add as many cells as you want uh, and, you know, just try things until you get a better idea of what it should look like. And if you just leave them there, that's fine. Or you can delete them. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, but whenever, like, you know, some of the homeworks I'll go through and try to figure out, like, why, you know, why does this feel wrong? Or why do I feel like it's explained badly or something? And I'll just go do it, right? But I'll almost always have at least a couple other cells where I do a couple of manipulations or like when I'm trying to build a test for you, right? I have to do a lot of like data science work in order to build a test that is actually executable for you, right? Um, and I rarely won't have a bunch of junk around that if I'm gonna save the thing and pass it on to somebody else, I'll clean up. But if it's just for me, I'll even just leave it there because I, don't, I know how I write code which stuff will be clean and which stuff, you know, which stuff is garbage and which stuff is real. Okay. So just keep in mind, you can always just add cells if you want to try something different. All right. Uh, we can, I think we should have enough time to talk about arrays. All right. So this is another word origin I should look up uh, one of these days. Um, but so an array is just a collection of things, okay? Um, and for anybody who comes from a Python background, we do not use lists normally uh, a lot, or a lot of the time we don't use lists. We'll talk about it in a few, like in a later lecture. We use this construct called make array. So let's just do heights. No, plus equals make array. Okay, so uh, let me let me print this differently. Uh, Okay, so what we end up with is a list of things, okay? There's no requirement that those list of things be in any particular order, okay? Or, you know, I don't know, like they're just a list, okay? But it's gonna retain the order of the things in the array, okay? So they're super handy. So my example, when we were talking about your question earlier, you know, 
a list of you know apple types okay that just would be an array okay and lost my mouse um but what i want to point out is that if we do a type on this and this is primarily for anybody who has a python programming background this is not the built-in list okay it's actually coming from a library called numpy um and there are some some differences that we're not going to get into today. All right. Um, so, what's cool about arrays, though, is that you can operate on them as if it was a set of individuals. So I can actually take that array of digits, right, and I can divide it by twelve. And when I divide it by twelve, that means I take each one and divide them each individually by twelve. Okay. So it's really kind of like uh, uh, multiplying the ha by the five, right? Because it's, I didn't just somehow multiply it by five. I actually took the ha and did it five times, okay? The same is true with the lists it, or the arrays. It will do the operation on each individual element, not somehow as a set, okay? That makes sense? All right, they are super useful. Um, I can also multiply, which, you know, same exact kind of thing. It's just different operation. Then what do you think? Actually, let me scroll back down here a little bit. What happens if I do heights plus one? What do you think that's going to do? It just adds one to all the heights. So this is where it's different from the string, right? Um, and that's the reason I pointed out is just because we gave the string example, but it does the exact same thing as multiplication. It just adds one to each. And then let's see, but then we get some useful operations on that thing. Um, so let me just hit a couple of these. So we can do, because we're lazy, It's like, I know I spelled something wrong. All right. Guesses of what that will do. Remember, we're lazy. Somebody without Python background. Go ahead. How many numbers are in the array? It's how many things are in the array. Yes. So, because it's short for length. So, yeah, let's see. What else? Um, but then we can also do fun operations on it where we can do things like sum. And I know we haven't talked about sum yet, but it's another method that just sums up everything that's in the array, okay? Or anything you pass to it, because I can just as easily sum and then pass like five numbers individually, or I can pass it in an array and it's just gonna add them all up. Um, and then, but I can even do operations on it and this one I'm going to cut and paste because I'm way likely to have typos. And what do you think that would give us? The mean, the mean right. Um, so what's the difference between mean and average? I mean, no. Essentially nothing. They're, they're two kind of different words for the same thing. However, in Python, um, one of those methods versus the other method has more features than the other. So we will never use any of those features. So you can use them basically interchangeably, uh, but we will do means and averages a lot. So this will give us the mean or the average of all the items in it because we add it up and then divide it by the count, right? Because that's how you would do it on paper. Um, but I don't do that. And then to make it even easier, we can pull one of those tools out of our toolbox and we can get average, okay? Um, so NP was the short, uh, if you remember when I showed you earlier, it said import NumPy as NP because God forbid we type out NumPy every time because that would be far too much typing. 
So we rename it to be NP, so it's shorter. The thing that's happened over time in Python though, is that the really popular, you know, kind of toolboxes have kind of a convention now that if you see NP like that, it always pretty, or almost always means NumPy, okay? It's like people always shorten it the same way so that if you come across it, you could have a pretty good guess that they mean NumPy. Does that make sense? So there's, what happens in programming is there's not only kind of the rules, but then there starts to be conventions around things that usually are designed and generally agreed upon um, to make it easier to share with others, okay? So imagine if everybody shortened that differently, that would be very difficult. Um, actually, it's funny, I was watching something recently um, about, uh, it's only relatively recently that the US states had consistently two character uh, shortens, okay? So like Massachusetts is MA, but it used to be that it was shortened as mass, right? And then like Iowa was shortened as like, I think it was I Iowa, but it was shortened as like IOW. Like, really, you can just go out, go all in and get that last letter. Like, uh, but so there was actually a big like government movement to actually standardize on just two letters, you know, to make things like postal service a little simpler. Um, but yeah, I didn't realize it was quite so recent. But so I can also do, that, which will give me the exact same value without all of the types. All right, but we're not limited to numbers, okay? So we can also talk about sushi. Uh, that's the only way I eat tuna, I don't know about anybody else. Um, but so we have bluefin, albacore, uh, and then gym sushi, whatever that is. Um, I don't know if that's a real thing, I probably just started typing. Um, so we can do that, but then we also still, Python still won't let us do things that, you know, should be fun. Um, so I cannot multiply this by two. Sadly, I don't know what it would do, but it's got to be something good because tuna is really tasty. Uh, all right. But then we can actually do what's called address a particular place in the uh, array as well. Okay, so the kind of generic term for using something like this item method is called um, addressing it. Okay, so like what, it's, what is its address, just like a house address. So in this case, uh, on an array, we can ask for a particular item. Okay, um, but let me do this real quick, real quick. Okay. Does anybody notice anything weird about Pike's item being 63 and this being the array? It's just so we count by zero, okay? So this is the zeroth place, first place, second place, third place. So if I ask for item three, I want the third place starting with zero, okay? Has anybody ever heard the term off by one error? Raise your hand. Okay, so this gets me, I've been programming for many years, gets me all the time, okay? And off by one error is when you type in item three or whatever and intended to get this. So I'm off by one, right? It doesn't matter the direction, but I made a mistake by, by one slot because I either forgot that it started with zero or I, try the other the other common one is you take the len right length okay and you try to get this one right but that's not the length right it's one less than that because it starts at zero because len here is a total count so it's one two three four five but it starts at the zeroth place so if i want the last position it's always going to be len minus one does that make sense so I continue to have this problem all the time, all right? Uh, there's actually a really old, terrible joke. Um, there are uh, three problem, three major problems in computer science, okay? Um, cache invalid 